Hello, this is Branko Malic of Gali Tribune. In this video, uh, we'll provide some insight on Hegel's dialectics uh, as an addendum to one of our previous podcasts when we talked about uh, Hegelian dialectics in terms of uh, Hegel's logic and his a quoting of being and the nothing. Uh, now I said uh, I said a few words about that, and uh, I feel I feel that I haven't been precise enough. That is to say, I haven't quoted Hegel himself. So in this podcast, we'll just jump into Hegel's Encyclopedie der Philosophischen Wissenschaften and his uh, Wissenschaft der Log logic, science of logic, uh, where he uh, <clears throat> where he uh, puts forward uh, this idea of his this first dialectical act, so called you could call it dialectical act of being, where being and nothingness uh, bear fruit, so to speak. Uh, and this is uh, the purpose of this uh, short video would be just to give some meat to the bones of what I uh, said and I, what, to what I refer often uh, to give you some hmm, some evidence, uh, not to expect you to take me for my word. Uh, of course, as I said, we'll jump into Hegel not go doing things from the beginning to the end. That, that would require at least uh, going through whole, whole book, <laughs> uh, this encyclopedia of philosophical sciences, which is kind of his introduction to his system. Uh, he, uh, uh, he considered it to be a concise and clear introduction to his system because he felt that he was not always uh, so uh, clear about what he thinks so trying to end in trying to clarify his own thought he always uh, ends up uh, making it even more <laughs> difficult but it is a, it is an impressive and uh, extremely uh, important philosophical work with all its flaws and wrong-headedness uh, and it is very worth considering especially now when we have this uh, popular notion of Hegelian dialectics which is which has got nothing to do with Hegel, Hegelian nor the dialectics at all and which is in my opinion symptomatic uh, uh, of uh, internet mediated uh, oblivion of our own uh, culture and not knowing the first thing about some uh, things that were general knowledge, for instance, some 20 to 30 years ago. I'm trying always, never try, tired of pointing this out. So as I am all, always uh, in rather scatting terms pointing out uh, the, the ignorant uh, parroting of these uh, slurs like Hegelian dialectics, I decided to uh, put my money where my mouth is and uh, if I think that's the correct expression and quote some Hegel himself and this will be a quote of maybe three passages from Hegel, we won't go too far, my German is not that good so that I don't want to, to read too much German uh, it's uh, Hegel's, Hegel's words are difficult to understand in themselves and even more difficult, will be more difficult with me reading them and translating in English. Uh, uh, just as, as an introduction to what I'm about to, to interpret firsthand from the Hegel's uh, book, uh, let us uh, begin by explaining something about this Hegel's uh, science of logic. Namely, logic was traditionally understood not as a science, but as introduction to science, or better to say, introduction in scientific thinking. It is an organ, the tool, as Aristotle called it, uh, for analysis. 
because and demonstration because in Aristotle's terms and Aristotle is was the first to put forward logic as a part of the uh, unified uh, body of methodological knowledge he called science although this science of Aristotle was something completely different of what we now call science uh, Hegel's notion of science is kind of far cry of the Aristotelian approach and already deeply flowed, but he uh, at least retains uh, this idea of science being, uh, knowledge being a unified uh, body, although Hegel makes, uh, makes a, a radical uh, departure in considering this body of science a system which uh, Aristotle would never uh, uh, I, I think could 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 not even conceive to apply. And uh, a difference when you take logic to be a science in, in this sense, uh, as opposed to purely uh, method uh, to be uh, exercised uh, in, is is extremely important because Hegel's logic is an ontology. That is, it is the science of the first determinations of being in general, of uh, what it means to be. Uh, that is, it is a science of the principles such as being, substances, beings, existence, essence, and finally, uh, concept and idea. And for Hegel, the concept the logic is, in the strictest sense, the science of pure idea. That is, the science of what he also calls concrete, absolute concept. Because in Hegel's eyes, uh, everything that is, is conceptual, and in its highest form of being, everything is an idea, and Hegel is considered to be idealist, and he called himself idealist. Sometimes he's called absolute idealist because he considers uh, being to be absolute idea. But this uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, kind of thinking has a pretty deep uh, prehistory, especially in Kant's transcendental philosophy upon which Hegel builds, and the radical departure from what traditionally was considered to be metaphysic ontology and so on. This departure is mirrored in Hegel's appliance of one principle from which all other things stem. And this is the principle of I, Ich, or the pure, absolute subject. For Hegel, everything that is, is a product of subject, of the dialectical relation subject has towards itself. So when uh, we'll talk about his equation of being and nothingness, and we have to know, I don't have time to go through whole text when he explicitly even says this, uh, when he demonstrates this, this that uh, sein, the sein, or the being for Hegel is I. It is always I. It is not to be taught as anything, in, in its essence, as anything else, but I equals I, ich egal ich, that's how, it, uh, how he writes it, that is indifference or identity of I with itself. And his whole philosophy is an attempt uh, to develop uh, determinations that are implicit in this equals sign between I and I, because this identity contains a difference in itself. And this difference uh, uh, is developing into equality. So <clears throat> this ident identity is something that develops, uh, that needs time to develop, and something that is historical. Like this is... Uh, a very important thing uh, to have in mind because for Hegel uh, 
term B as was used before him uh, is just a, a flawed attempt to come to to concept he has not because he's a personally egotistic he was not an egotistic man uh, it is because he's metaphysically egotistic because he uh, supposes uh, that uh, things we experience in this world are not things in itself but things as phenomena that are always related to us and determined by subjective uh, determinations of categories of reason, category, what Kant called categories of pure reason, to give you an example, some of those categories are quality, which will be, which is the first category of his science of logic, for instance, that something is. Uh, or categories of uh, modality, that is uh, possibility, necessity, existence, and so on. Uh, those categories are not uh, something uh, that exists without us. And this is uh, the major, the major shift, for instance, in someone like Thomas Aquinas, or if we want to go further back, Aristotle, this would be complete nonsense. I myself consider this leap to be nonsense, but not a stupid nonsense. It, it is kind of mm, this uh, a spiritual uh, uh, hmm, how would I call it? Uh, spiritual adventure that lost its way completely because uh, those notions indeed are very real and they don't need us to make them real. Uh, Hegel's philosophy uh, starts, as all philosophy of German idealism, and I would say the whole spiritual endeavor of modernity, of which he is in a way a pinnacle, uh, relies on assumption that the first and foremost uh, source of all knowledge and all truth is a man himself. But man, in Hegel's terms, understood in a very lofty manner, man that is in his essence identical with God. This does not mean that man is God, but more like God is man or God is human product of history, God came to pass <laughs> in a way uh, through endeavors of humans. They're uh, like a, a more like a result of history and not like beginning of history. God is a beginning and the end, but in the beginning, it is ab his abstraction. In the end, he is concrete. This is very. This may sound uh, rather uh, warped to some people. It is not that. It is, uh, I think, completely, <laughs> completely uh, wrong, uh, wrong uh, way to take it. Theological, metaphysical thinking, catastrophical way to take, but it is very thought, well thought out by Hegel, and it is a reflection of uh, modernity in itself. So, if you want to understand modernity, I would argue, and if you want to understand postmodernity by consequence, Hegel, Hegel is the one to examine and examine him thoroughly. And why many people don't do that will be patently obvious now when I start reading him. <laughs> because he's a damn, damn obscure guy. But not so much from lack of style as much as from uh, him really going deep down uh, into some questions. So, <clears throat> I will quote his Delere from Zein. The doctrine of being, this is the beginning of uh, logic, and the logic first determination of logic he investigates is being. So, let us begin. Hegel says in paragraph 84, Das Sein ist der Begriff nur an sich. 
Die Bestimmungen äh, desselben sind seine. In ihre Unterscheide andere gegeneinander. Und ihre weitere Bestimmung, die Form des Dialektischen, ist ein Übergehen in anderes. Now, I'll try to translate. Please bear with me. The being is the concept only in itself. This is very important. Please bear with me. Die Bestimmungen selber, oh, the determination, its determination are substances uh, and their uh, distinctions between themselves, between themselves, as he said in, in German, andere gegeneinander, this is the kind of wordplay you can't really translate, one in contrast to other, he, uh, uh, he emphasized other, and their uh, further determination that are dialectical in form, being is uh, the passing over into otherness, into other. Now, what does this mean? The being is the concept only in itself. Uh, in itself, for Hegel, means that being is not reflected. This pure being, the, the beginning of logic, it is not reflexive. Now, as we said at the beginning, uh, the being in Hegel's terms is I, unqualifiedly so. And what kind of I is unreflected I? This is I without properties. If I would reflect, it would be an sich and für sich, in itself and for itself. For instance, I am for in, its, in myself and for myself, to a degree, not absolutely, because I'm not an absolute I, because I have consciousness. This being in the beginning, is only in itself. Its determination are substances that these individual beings, individual determinations of being, and their uh, differences between themselves, because they are plurality, and their further determinations uh, make being uh, to be a transition or passing over into other of itself. Now, what does this mean? This is the pure unreflected identity. And uh, when this unreflected identity, that is a pure I, pure uh, undifferentiated something, when we start reflecting into it, and the moment we start talking about it, we are already reflecting, it multiplies into determination, determinations that are existence, that are other things, that are others of this pure identity. There is some otherness in it, underness. This underness, this other, is as a determination complete opposite of itself because a sign means a uh, being means one in Hegel. And the moment it is reflected in itself, the moment it starts to being in act, it bears fruit of its own opposition, the other. It becomes other to itself because act of reflection is making oneself other to oneself, looking oneself as from the outside. And this is uh, we can all. This is just the beginning, but we can always know already note this is dialectics. Now you see what the dialectics Hegelian dialectics is. It is a reflection. It is the uh, intrinsic principle and process, not some kind of 
<laughs> social engineering method. No, no. It's complete opposite of this. And this is the process in the heart of being, in the heart of existence. Hegel says that his Wissenschaft der Log Logik is uh, the science of the thoughts in the mind of God be be before the creation. They give, uh, the logic gives the pure matrix of determinations of being that are to be developed in history, uh, in history of art, philosophy, in, in world history, all going towards a concrete end. And this history, uh, the real history, the world history, is, giving, is the process of giving the content to this form so that this can become, as Hegel says, concrete. And something being concrete for Hegel means to be begriff, the concept. For instance, and in absolute sense, when the concepts reach its pinnacle, it becomes idea. And what idea is for Hegel? I'll give you an example. Uh, Christianity, for instance, is an absolute religion. It is the idea of the religion, what the religion is. That is, the mediation of spirit, absolute spirit through sensual medium, through, uh, through uh, in a way, for Hegel, artistic expression, because for Hegel, art is an expression of religion. Religion is the truth of art, as he would say, dialectically. And for instance, in Christianity, you have absolute uh, religion or absolute idea of religion, because it fulfills uh, the intrinsic re re uh, reason why religion exists. It identifies the finite and infinite, God and man, in, in Christ's death and resurrection, because it demonstrates, for in Hegel's view at least, which I don't share one minute, that uh, uh, essence of man and essence of God are the same, that man's reflection upon his own uh, spirit will disclose uh, not, uh, not his own in a sense of uh, concrete person, but man in general, will disclose the mystery of Godhead, Trinity and the reason of existence. And that's why uh, Kegel wants philosophy to be absolute science and to use this feeling of from Philosophia and become Sophia, the pure wisdom, the wisdom, the Theosophia, the wisdom of God. And this is a pronounced uh, Gnosticism of Hegel also, uh, that is his belief in, in uh, Theodicy, true knowledge, uh, that is uh, the justification of the world's existence through knowledge. Now we'll go further uh, down the line. So this is, uh, we talked about being now we have uh, this reflection, uh, reflection of being in itself uh, starts is 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 a beginning of uh, making differentiations, determinations, and those determinations are pure categories. And first of them is quality, quality. That is being. In first uh, reflection is is qualified. This is pure, really obvious thing. You qualify uh, something purely abstract, as he says this being is, you start qualifying in reflection. And this is what he says. Das reine Sein macht den Anfang, weil es sowohl reiner Gedanke als das Unbestimmte einfache und mitelbar ist. Der erste Anfang aber nichts vermittelt, und weiter bestimmtes sein kann. So the pure being uh, is the beginning. It makes the beginning. But as the pure thought, as undetermined, is a, a simple unmediated one, the first beginning is not mediated and cannot be uh, further uh, determined. And determined, 
by the way, means qualified. Now, what he means here? The pure being uh, consists, alpha, uh, the beginning consists from the, is an act of pure being. It's very hard to accurately translate in English. And there, there you see the genius, philosophical genius of the German language, because uh, he kind of, uh, in German, he kind of gives you a feel, uh, even almost visually, of what he thinks. It's very hard to mediate it in English. In Croatian, it's much easier. Uh, the pure being, the pure thought, are identical. Because being is thought, and this mean, means being is I. And this I is something you and I and everybody else participate in, in a sense. Because this I is not the I of God, it is the I of humanity. And this is very problematic. This is turning around of uh, proper metaphysics where you go from God or, if you like, from the principle to creation, through providence, to the world. And then, in the end, maybe you go through a few angels in the meantime, as it is in Christianity, or uh, various kind of benevolent demons in Neoplatonism. And even angels, they use the term. To Angeloi. And then you come to nature, and then in the end you come to man and say through words about that cosmic shithole called matter. Because the Neoplatonists. In Hegel, it's from the man to the world and then above, because this is the, the anthropological humanist way of thinking that is uh, historically. Uh, Made possible that was historically made possible by the French Revolution. This I'm here paraphrasing Hegel because he considered the French Revolution to be this event that made all this possible, and it was not accidental, of course, because he sees uh, the history as the development of the idea of freedom that in his time reached its absolute, and this idea of freedom is also a revelation of God in history, disclosing the meaning of humanity to humanity in human terms this is something he presupposes but this pure thought or pure being is simple and unmediated Hegel hates simple and he thought that simplicity is the expression of reduction so you reduce things to simplicity, to atomic facts, for instance, in terms of Bertrand Russell, after him, and such people. Uh, I, I try to uh, refrain from criticizing something I uh, am explaining, but here I must note, uh, because Hegel criticizes the ancient, and especially medieval Christian philosophers, or theologians, and metaphysicians, that they take this do this reduction to, to some kind of logical atoms, uh, these uh, <coughs> notions of God, uh, soul, and such, and then <coughs> end up just talking about words. And they are not really, they are, uh, the, the real truth is in complexity of content. But what he gets wrong is that einfache uh, <coughs> or simplicitas is not reduced it is being simple means being unique not being individualized real individuals pure simple individuals in scholastics individual is ineffable it is a logical margin of thinking not existent being and hegel tries to show that they in fact uh, were basing their, uh, their what he considers to be systems of metaphysics on that. No, it was the other, completely the other way around. But we'll, of course, give Hegel, Hegel uh, a benefit of the doubt uh, to explain what it means. So, unmittelbare, uh, immediate, unmediated. This is anathema for you. Simple, unmediated thing is for dumbkomps, said Hegel. Not in these terms, of course. But I think we privately did. Uh, he was against the idea that 
there is a, such a thing as unmediated, immediate knowledge that is worth its salt. This is very interesting because he considers the truth to be the whole of the truth. And the whole is possible only in system that uh, brings uh, that uh, brings forth and explains everything and this is encyclopedia of philosophical sciences it is uh, the, as he calls the circle of circles it is the description of the journey of spirit and how the for instance nature is production of spirit how the art how the philosophy, how the society, and so on and so forth. And the important thing is the conceptualized, to lay it all out in clear system of concepts, outside of which nothing else remains. And this means having, uh, in fact, a godlike knowledge, explaining the world, explaining the thoughts in the mind of God. And this is logic is about precisely thoughts in the mind of God where he is still in a kind of slumber just uh, thinking how he will make all things work and this is not <clears throat> this is not shell in any uh, shape or form this is very important to understand to understand our own situation because this is the birth this is the pinnacle of modernity this is the belief Unbridled belief in human faculty. And it is really religious because in Hegel's, it is it, as flawed as it can be, he was a very pious man, Lutheran, pious Lutheran. Now, uh, he was driven by a genuine religious feeling, but he hated the feelings. He wanted to have a rational, uh, but dialectical, speculative, as he calls it, uh, it is observing knowledge, knowledge that uh, has a vision of truth. And this vision has to be a system, system that is outside of us, that is objectively, that is absolutely valid as an encyclopedia, that has, n not as an encyclopedia, as a compendium of knowledge but as the uh, demonstration how the whole knowledge develops from one principle and this is the, precisely the principle of being we are now talking about the principle of pure eye and what is interesting is that we cannot experience this we cannot intuit this we have to have this in a way outside of us and the reason why is this so in Hegel is because he starts from this idea of I, of subject. Subject, if subject is the only one, only being, it has to uh, always go outside, step outside itself to know itself. And if he wants to ultimately know itself, it has to ultimately step out. To make ultimate kenosis. And when you read Marx and Feuerbach, or Max Stirner, or these Hegelian leftists, Hegelian left, so called, the people who turned everything around, in Hegel you see what uh, dragon seed he sowed. That's, uh, some, uh, that's what uh, German, or oh, that is to say, uh, I think, uh, Russian authorities. Uh, called his philosophy uh, after his death when they saw uh, that he conservative as he was absolutely conservative progressive very strange combination he saw the seed, dragon seed uh, from the legend of uh, Argonauts uh, in uh, of revolutionaries because Hegel's philosophy from its conservatism gave birth to uh, revolutionary ideologies that rocked the late 19th and uh, whole of 20th century. He is the birthplace of this. And he is turning in his way the very moment I think everybody mentions this fact. <coughs> now, we say, so it, this is how we view simplicity. The first beginning, 
So the first beginning cannot, uh, cannot mediate anything and cannot uh, qualify anything or determine anything. Being is complete impotence. Or the, which is uh, the same in his dialectical view, complete pure potency. But it's important. What he does here, he was very influenced by Jakob Beme, that was a uh, 17th century uh, German Protestant mystic who wrote about, uh, was a visionary and wrote about tracts about. Theogony, theogony uh, that is uh, the birth of God, of processes in the Godhead, in the God himself. He was describing, he thought he was able to describe the essence of God, the, the uh, duality that is supposedly existent in God, and how this duality is uh, eternally uh, overcome being overcome by the God himself. And this is the idea, this idea that you can do that, that you can peek in the mind of God and in some way uh, present this to others. Although Beme uh, taught in symbols and descriptions of visions, we have Hegel who takes this Beme's, uh, let's call it insight, although I don't see how this insight is possible or, or I don't see how can it be true. I think it can happen. I think it can bear fruit, but I don't think they are very edible. Uh, anyway, what Hegel does is he turns all this into a rational system. No vision, no symbols. He hates those things. Give me concepts. And he's trying to do this in concepts. And here we come to the conclusion. Das nichts is as diese unmittelbare sich selbst gleiche. A benzo dasselbe, was das Sein ist. Die Wahrheit des Seins, so wie des Nichts ist, daher die Einheit beider. Diese Einheit ist das Werden. Now, the nothing, the nothing, the nothingness, is taken as this uh, unmediated equal to itself at the same time and in turn the same as the being the truth of being this is important the truth of being as well as nothingness is so the unity of both this unity is coming to pass or create. Now, what is this? The nothing is identical with being. That is, two opposites are identical. Ich egal ich, I equals I means nothing equals nothing, being equal beings. I is a being, but if it is not determined, it is at the same time nothing. So in this identity of I with itself, we have inescapable unidentity, the otherness. And what Hegel's, uh, and this, in Hegel's view, this is a good thing because the truth of being and nothing is the coming to pass, and this is dialectics. This is Hegelian dialectics, and this is why I'm doing this uh, this video, namely <clears throat> Hegel's dialectics is trying to uh, uh, take uh, the truth of something in the view. Excuse me. Uh, And uh, this is uh, what he means by, by this, the truth of being and nothing. Uh, what people who are not really that well versed in dialectics 
uh, in what dialectics means. Uh, uh, this uh, truth would be that uh, synthesis synthesis of uh, the triad uh, uh, thesis antithesis synthesis. There is nothing nothing of a kind in Hegel because Hegel dialectics is something that is that has to be reflected upon and it can be reflected upon only as it uh, <clears throat> as it develops and this is uh, the example you see here that's why you have to uh, quote Hegel himself because he expects you to jump into this process of reflection to reflect with him not to to try to make some kind of schematics uh, problem reaction solution as it is uh, this I, I won't be uh, abusive but I say this these people who know nothing about nothing uh, are trying to put this no no this is something else and the truth is the higher moment of the previous uh, of the contradiction and this is weird so where then coming to pass is both being and nothing because it's coming from nothing into being and from being into nothing. And this word, and you know, this is participle future of uh, to be in German, and, and in German it has this strong connotation of future. It, this is future. Uh, it is it is indicating to future because in Hegel this um, process of identity of being and nothingness is purposeful. And meaningful, and it is uh, directed to a, a concrete, uh, concrete end, concrete end of history, fulfillment of history, and this is the beginning. So you see what Hegel, Hegelian dialectics is. It is the the process of uh, contradictions bearing fruit uh, that is not outside of them; it's intrinsic. So both being and nothing are. Coming to pass, they are not. Uh, they are not negated. They are not destroyed in this. They are elements. They are facets of Verden. Verden is the fulfillment of this reflection of theirs, and that, that's Hegelian dialectics, namely that it uh, relies on principle of overcoming, uh, uplifting, and conserving. This is Hegelian dialectics. So when you have, for instance, pagan religions and then you have Christianity and pagan religions are negated by Christianity but not in the sense they are destroyed but they are conserved what is essential in them is conserved in Christianity and risen to a higher level so it is uh, in a way made eternal uh, in the absolute religion and this is in all these dialectical progressions in Hegel Overcoming is not destroying, and this is why Hegel is a very interesting. Why he is pinnacle of modernity? He is both ultimate conservative because every past uh, moment is necessary in the development of spirit. So uh, Plato was absolutely essential. Uh, French Revolution was absolutely essential, but uh, we have Hegel. Hegel's German idealism, which is superior to Plato, and we have a Prussian state, which is superior to French revolutionary state, but they are not annihilated in this process. They are made uh, to be uh, constituents, uh, uh, steps in this process, and you can climb the steps assuming that step you just walk uh, over is disappearing into nothingness. No, steps remain behind you. And this is where, really, and this is Hegelian. In its essentials. So I just wanted to make this uh, more clearer because I was talking, giving casual remarks. Now we have less casual remarks, and I, this, with this I would conclude. I hope it was instructive and interesting. And please follow Kali Tribune, subscribe to Kali Tribune, and most of all support Kali Tribune and. Uh, you will see even a technical improvement in these videos, which are technically really uh, low end, but unfortunately, that's the situation I'm in now. 
and now I will try to close this program 